The swordsman is set during the Imperial Joseon dynasty led by a king named Guang He Jun. That night, King Guang He, with his baby girl and bodyguard, had to escape from the pursuit of the rebels who wanted to overthrow his throne. The rebels were some royal officials who used to support King Guang He, but when he did not take any action in dealing with the conflict between Ming and Qing dynasties, they decided to rebel. King Guang He himself decided to be neutral because if he publicly supported Ming dynasty, the Joseon people would be threatened with being colonized by the notorious Qing dynasty. Meanwhile, if King Guang He supported the Qing dynasty, the Joseon dynasty would be considered a traitor to the Ming dynasty who had contributed to helping Joseon dynasty from attacks by Japanese imperial forces several years ago. That was why he could not show a clear attitude and chose to be neutral in dealing with the conflict between Ming and Qing dynasties. Unfortunately, several high-ranking officials of the Joseon kingdom were disappointed with the decision of King Guang He not to support Ming dynasty, which had been helping the Joseon kingdom all this time. Therefore, some royal officials agreed to carry out a rebellion and overthrow the throne of King Guanghe so that they could form a new government that supported the Ming dynasty. That night, the only male bodyguard of King Guanghe named Giam Sabak tried to protect him and his baby from the pursuit of the rebels. Sabak is the most royal guard of the Guanghe royal family, and he is one of the best swordsmen in the kingdom. At that time, as an honorable swordsman, Sabak will have a dual fight with another royal swordsman named Min Sung Ho. Sung Ho apparently still hesitates to carry out a rebellion because King Guang He is a good and wise king. However, he joined the rebellion due to the king's decision not to support the Ming dynasty and being provoked by another official named Li Mukyo. The duel begins between Sabak, who wants to protect the king, and Sung Ho, who rebelled. The battle between the two best swordsmen is fierce, but Sabak is suddenly in a difficult position when his sword shatters, and the blade shards hit his eyes. Seeing this, King Guanghe decided to surrender himself to the rebels and was forced to surrender his throne as King of Joseon to the rebel officials. But before he was taken away into exile, King Guanghe handed over a torn piece of his robes to Sabak and motioned for him to take care of his baby girl. When Sabak leaves with the daughter of King Guanghe, he recalls the memories of the past when he met him for the first time. At that time, Sabak fought against several prison guards from the Qing Dynasty alone after he managed to escape from the Qing Dynasty dungeon. Sung Ho and King Guanghe, who is a swordsman, realize that Sabak has the potential to become the best swordsman. Therefore, King Guanghe brought him to the kingdom to receive special training from swordsmen and appointed him as the bodyguard of the royal family. Sabak is so grateful for all the goodness of King Guanghe that he is determined to always be loyal to the king and always protect the royal family. Eighteen years after the events of the royal rebellion, Sabak takes care of the daughter of King Guanghe and lifts in the mountains so that the royal Joseon troops cannot find them. Even he changed his name to Taeyul and named the king's daughter Taeok and took care of her as his own daughter. Every day, they survive by hunting and selling the skins of their prey to the nearby market. Taeyul feels comfortable living a life away from war and enjoying his life with Taeok in peace. But all that calm began to be disturbed when Taeyul's eyes worsened daily, and he almost lost sight. Taeok, who was worried, called a male physician to check the condition of her father's eyes so that he would not go blind. After examining Taeyul, the physician advises them to immediately treat Taeyul's eyes using herbal medicine, which is only available at the village trading post. The next day, Taeyul and Taeok descended from the mountain and headed to the village to buy the herbal medicine they needed at the trading post. At this time, the Joseon kingdom was led by a king named Inju to replace the position of King Guanghe who was previously dethroned by force. That day, King Inju met with high-ranking officials, including Sung Ho and Mukyo, to discuss a solution to the cruelty of the Qing dynasty which carried out colonization on the borders of the Joseon kingdom and enslaved the Joseon people. The Qing dynasty began to colonize since King Inju supported the Ming dynasty and dismissed officials who did not support his decision. As a protest, the Ming dynasty began to colonize the Joseon kingdom and kidnap the women of the Joseon people as slaves. Joseon royal officials were worried, but they couldn't do much because the Qing dynasty demanded a huge ransom to free the enslaved Joseon people. King Inju and other high officials were also worried that if this condition continued, their children and wives would become victims of slavery. Mukyo then offered to negotiate with the leader of the slave post named Guru Tai. The next day, Sung Ho intends to resign from the position of a royal official because he feels guilty for the Joseon people, who are suffering more and more after they overthrow the throne of King Guanghe. The scene returns to Taeyul and Taeok, who have arrived at the village and pass a market that sells various beads and goods that catch Taeok's attention. In the middle of the market, suddenly, they saw a husband who wanted to release his wife who was about to be made a slave by the Ming dynasty's henchmen. Still, because the rates for freeing slaves were increasing, the husband could only beg for his wife to be released. Taeok, who saw all that, felt sorry and intended to help him, 
but Taeyul immediately stopped her and asked her not to interfere. The soldiers of the Joseon kingdom came to deal with the commotion, but after they saw the three slave overseers from the Ming dynasty, they couldn't do much and chose to leave. On the other hand, Mukyo has a meeting with the slave post leader named Guru Tai, who is known as one of the most ruthless swordsmen and is a cousin of the emperor of the very corrupt Qing dynasty. At the meeting, Sung Ho, who was also there, felt very angry when Guru Tai issued many insulting words to the Joseon kingdom so that he stomped his sword. Seeing Sung Ho holding the sword, Guru Tai realized he was a great swordsman, so he wanted to see Sung Ho's fighting ability. A moment later, the fight between Sung Ho and one of Guru Tai's executioners, Hua Sam, took place. Sung Ho looked serious and swung his sword precisely, while Hua Sam looked ambitious and arrogant, thinking he was the best swordsman. However, with his composure and accuracy, Sung Ho won the sword fight by a landslide. Meanwhile, Tae Yul and Taeok have arrived at the trading post and meet the woman who owns the trading post named Hua Sun. Unfortunately, the price of herbal medicine is very high, and to get the medicine, one has to go through the inspection of local officials because the medicine is very rare. Hearing this, Taeok tried to offer the hunted skin she had previously prepared, but again Hua Sun refused the skin because its value was not comparable to the price of the herbal medicine they were selling. Not long after, Guru Tai and his men came to the place to rest for a while. After leaving the trading post, Tae Yul gives Taeok a bracelet she previously wanted at the village market. Afterward, they went to a food stall run by a woman who had breastfed Taeok as a baby. On the other hand, Mukyo comes to Hua Sun to ask for a girl who can work to take care of his mother. Hearing this, she suddenly thinks of Taeok and intends to offer her this job and earn enough money to buy the rare herbal medicine they need. The next morning when it was still dark, Tae Yul went to a sword craftsman who often made swords for the royal family. He wants to ensure that the sword craftsman is still alive so that one day when he needs a sword, he can come to that place. At the same time, Hua Sun comes to a food stall to meet Taeok and offers her the job that was previously offered by Mukyo. After Taeok is met with Mukyo, he explains that he wants to adopt her as an adopted daughter. She will later get luxurious facilities like other official families so that she will get more than enough money to buy herbal medicine for her father. Hearing the offer, Taeok immediately agreed to Mukyo's offer because she wanted to help her father get a better life and the best medical care. The next day when Sung Ho visited Mukyo's house, he saw Taeok's red cloth, which was very similar to the cloth King Guang He had given him. Sung Ho then gets information from Mukyo that he will adopt her as his adopted daughter to take care of his mother. When Taeyo returns to the restaurant, he is informed by the restaurant owner that Taeok has gone with the woman who owns the trading post, so he immediately rushes to go to the trading post. At the same time, there had been a commotion at the trading post because three of Guru Tai's men intended to rape the servant girls there. Seeing the situation, Hua Sun and her bodyguards were forced to confront the three executioners and fight against them. When Hua Sun was almost killed by one of the executioners, Taeok came and slingshot him with a stone, injuring the man's face. Seeing the wound on his face, the man became angry and intended to attack her, but Taeyul managed to prevent it. At first, Taeyul avoided conflict by following the man's words to prostrate and apologize. But when Hua Sam forces him to hand over the virgin Taeok to them, the battle between Hua Sam and Taeyul is unavoidable. Their fight was quite fierce, but Taeyul seemed superior to Hua Sam, and he managed to beat him in a landslide. It turns out that their fight was witnessed by Sung Ho secretly so that he knows that Sabak and King Guang He's daughter are still alive today. That night, Tae Yul decides to tell Taeok the truth about her identity and real parents. Hearing this, Taeok still respects Tae Yul as her father and wants to always protect him from repaying all of his kindness so far. She tells him that she will work as a nurse and become an official's adopted daughter so she can earn enough money to buy herbal medicine. Hearing that, Tae Yul was silent and couldn't do anything because her decision was unanimous. He feels very sad because he has to part with the one he has cared for quite a long time. On the other hand, Sung Ho sees Mukyo and several other officials having a secret meeting and planning to find an adopted child as a substitute for their daughter. This is because the Qing dynasty offered the Joseon dynasty that they would free some slaves and lower the ransom price if the officials handed over their daughters to the Qing dynasty rulers. In addition, Mukyo had sent a letter of objection to King Inju to take action against the cruelty of the Qing dynasty. Sung Ho secretly eavesdrops on the conversation and realizes that the girl Mukyo was about to adopt yesterday will be handed over to the Qing dynasty. The next day, Guru Tai's men seize the objection letter that Mukyo wanted to send to King Inju. After reading the letter's contents, Guru Tai felt angry at Mukyo who had conspired to rebel against the Qing dynasty. Therefore, he prepared special forces to raid Mukyo's residence and massacre all Mukyo's family members. As Tae Yul is walking home through the forest, he is suddenly attacked by some unknown men and the fight begins again. After successfully defeating them all, Taeyul realized that Taeok might be in danger, 
so he immediately rushed to the trading post to see her condition. In the evening, Gurutai and his troops came to Mukyo's residence and started killing all of Mukyo's servants. After that, Gurutai intends to kill Teok who he thinks is Mukyo's daughter. However, one of Gurutai's men, who was stabbed by Teok, recognizes her and tells Gurutai that she is not Mukyo's biological daughter. Hearing this, he began to know the cunning of Mukyo who sacrificed another girl to save his own daughter. Shortly after, Sung Ho appeared and decided to accept his offer as a swordsman in the Qing Dynasty Empire, so Guru Tai cancelled killing Taeok. On the other hand, Hua Sam attacks Hua Sun and forces her to tell him where Tae Yul is because he wants to take revenge on him for defeating him. Not long after, Tae Yul appeared and attacked Hua Sam brutally until he died. Tae Yul then scolds Hua Sun for handing his daughter over to corrupt officials to become slaves. Hua Sun, who doesn't know anything about Mukyo's cunning plan, takes him to Mukyo's residence to find Taeok. Unfortunately, when he was there, everyone in the house had died in such a tragic state that Taeyul immediately rushed to the headquarters of the swordsmen who had become henchmen of the Qing dynasty. In a state of anger, Taeyul slaughtered all the swordsmen in that place mercilessly to get information about the location of the girls enslaved by the Qing dynasty. After that, Taeyul goes to the border where Jocelyn girls and women are trafficked to become sexual slaves. At the same time, Mukyo goes to meet King Inju to report that Guru Tai has taken his daughter hostage. Unfortunately, after arriving at the royal palace, Guru Tai had already met King Inju, so Mukyo couldn't say anything to the king. The scene switched to Tae Yul, who has arrived at the border, trying to find Taeok and the woman who owns the food stall, kidnapped by the swordsmen. He then goes to a tent after he hears a scream for help from the woman who owns the shop. When he arrived in the tent, some rude men tried to rape the woman, so Tae Yul immediately slaughtered all the men in the tent. Outside the tent, the only camp guard Taeyul still hasn't killed appears drunk after he slept with the other slave girls. After slaughtering all the men in the tent, Taeyul threatens the camp guards to free all the slaves there. But after all the female slaves were freed, he couldn't find Taeyul's whereabouts and only found her bell bracelet given by one of the female slaves there. Taeyul then ordered the man guarding the camp to take him to the location of the girls who would be enslaved by the rulers of the Qing dynasty. The next day, Mukyo plans to attack the Guru Tai base on the border with the royal army without the knowledge of King Inju. However, when one of Mukyo's men was negotiating, he was suddenly attacked with a hand axe to his death, so the fight between Guru Tai's men and the royal soldiers was unavoidable. Unfortunately, Guru Tai's men fought with rifles so they could easily slaughter the entire army of royal soldiers from a distance. Mukyo, still hiding behind, decided to leave the place after witnessing that all the troops he brought were dead. But before he could leave, two other Guru Tai's men appeared and threatened him with axes. At the same time, Tae Yul arrives at the place with the help of navigation from the camp guard man, who instantly dies when he is stabbed by an axe thrown by Guru Tai's men. As a result of the attack, a two-on-one battle between Tae Yul and Guru Tai's men ensued. Not long after, the Qing Dynasty troops who heard the commotion began to arrive and attack Tae Yul with consecutive shots. Luckily, he could use the bodies of Guru Tai's men as shields and use the opportunity to approach them and attack them all. After a very long and tiring battle, Taeyul finally managed to defeat the entire enemy army until the only surviving executioner was frightened and fled from the place. Mukyo, who realized that Taeyul was Sabak who had protected King Guanghe, immediately knelt before him and begged him to save his daughter who had been kidnapped by Guru Tai. In a state of weakness and blurred vision, Taeyul replied by saying Mukyo should not think about anything else and should try to improve the country's state that he had changed by the betrayal he committed in the past. After that, Taeyul limped away before he finally fainted from exhaustion. The next day, when Taeyul wakes up from his stupor, he finds himself at the trading post, and his eyes have been treated by Hua Sun using herbal medicine on Mukyo's orders. After that, Taeyul went to the swordsman he had met to pick up a new sword he would use to defeat Guru Tai. At the same time, Sung Ho prepares to fight Taeyul because Guru Tai threatens that he will hurt the people of Jason. The next day when Taeyul arrives at Guru Tai's headquarters, Sung Ho has been waiting for him to fight for their respective goals. Meanwhile, Guru Tai and his servant girl would watch their fight while relaxing from the balcony. The battle between the two best swordsmen from the Jason kingdom was fierce because both had very capable sword fighting skills. But thanks to his strong determination to save Taeyok and fulfill his promise to King Guanghe, Taeyul manages to defeat Sung Ho. After the fight ends, Guru Tai invites Taeyul to fight in a place where he can see Taeyok who has been tied up with iron chains. At the beginning of the fight, Taeyul initially seemed difficult to deal with the attacks from Guru Tai because of his speed. But after seeing Taeyok being threatened with a sword by Guru Tai's servant girl, Taeyul becomes angry and excited to kill him. In the next round, Taeyul intentionally injures the servant girl who is watching Taeyok so he can ensure she is safe. After that, 
Taeyul started to put out all his attacks and fought with all his might to defeat Gurutai. After a very fierce battle, Taeyul finally managed to kill him, and he immediately hugged Taeok with a feeling of relief. Since Gurutai died as the leader of the slave post and the death of the entire Qing Dynasty army, all slaves were freed, and the remaining Qing Dynasty officials decided to leave the Joseon Kingdom. The film closes with Taeyul who has reunited with his daughter whom he loves very much, and lifts their lives in peace and tranquility. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, that betraying a legitimate and wise ruler will only put a country in a more miserable situation.